to fight for those who have been forgotten in this country. This is America's time for choosing. We can choose to allow a border invasion, or we can choose to stop it. We can choose reckless borrowing and spending, or we can choose to limit government and lower inflation. We can choose political indoctrination, or we can choose classical education. These choices are symptoms of the underlying struggle to ensure that constitutional government can endure and that Western civilization can survive. And we launched this campaign to bring accountability to government, regain sovereignty at our border, to our society. We cannot succeed as a country if we allow our nation to be invaded, our currency to be debased, our cities to crumble, and our kids to be indoctrinated. The DC elites who facilitated this mess do not care about you, and they do not work for you. They work for themselves. They seek to accumulate power at your expense to pursue an agenda that is harmful to the American people. Citizens do not serve politicians. It is the duty of politicians to serve you. Talk is cheap. Actions speak louder than words. Reversing the decline of this nation requires leadership that delivers big results for the people we are elected to serve. I have a record of leading with conviction, championing an agenda marked by bold colors, delivering on my promises, and defeating the people who are responsible for our nation's decline. That is the type of leadership we need for all of us. traveled across the country to deliver a message of hope that decline is a choice and that we can, in fact, succeed again as a nation. Nobody worked harder, and we left it all out on the field. Now, following our second place finish in Iowa, we've prayed and deliberated on the way forward. If there was anything I could do to produce a favorable outcome, more campaign stops, more interviews, I would do it. But I can't ask our supporters to volunteer their time and donate their resources if we don't have a clear path to victory. Accordingly, I am today suspending my campaign. I'm proud to have delivered on 100% of my promises, and I will not stop now. It's clear to me that a majority of Republican primary voters want to give Donald Trump another chance. They watch his presidency get stymied by relentless resistance, and they see Democrats using lawfare this day to attack him. Well, I've had disagreements with Donald Trump, such as on the coronavirus pandemic and his elevation of Anthony Fauci, Trump is superior to the current incumbent, Joe Biden. That is clear. I signed a pledge to support the Republican nominee, and I will honor that pledge. He has my endorsement because we can't go back to the old Republican guard of yesteryear, a repackage formed of warmed over corporatism that Nikki Haley represents. The days of putting Americans last, of kowtowing to large corporations, of caving to woke ideology are over. I thank all of our passionate supporters who have stood by us through it all, that we had people volunteer to come to Iowa in the middle of a blizzard to knock on doors and make phone calls touched us dearly. No candidate had more thrown at him, but no candidate had so many committed volunteers and staff. Finally, I want to thank my wife, Casey, and our kids, Madison, Mason, and Mamie. Casey's gone far above and beyond in her support for our campaign and for our cause. She's not only a great wife and mother, She's a great American who cares deeply about the future of the country that our kids will inherit. Our kids have seen and done a lot on the trail, from playing on the famed Field of Dreams baseball site in Iowa to making their first snowman in New Hampshire. They are one of the reasons we fight so hard for what we believe in. Winston Churchill once remarked that success is not final, failure is not fatal, it is the courage to continue that counts. While this campaign has ended, the mission continues. Down here in Florida, we will continue to show the country how to lead. Thank you and God bless. Well, this concession speech was long in coming, folks. Really long, and I'm glad that DeSantis did it now. Hopefully this will just put out of bed the misery of his campaign, which never had a chance to start. I think what happened, folks, was is that the whispering in the ears you can do this, Governor. You're the one that delivered in the 2022 elections, and Trump is on the way down. He's got all these indictments coming at him. He's got everything. This is what's going to finally take him down. It's going to elevate you to top, and you're going to be out there the savior with COVID and how Florida came back. It's all there. 
when you start listening to all this stuff and you make the political calculus that you're the guy when clearly that political calculus was so wrong. I always said, and I've said this before, that Ron DeSantis' time was not during the term of Trump. It was not during this time. He should have waited four freaking years. A dream, a nice ticket definitely could have been Trump and DeSantis without all the stuff in between the two of them. And then that set, that would have set up DeSantis to be obviously the go-to person for the next eight years in 2028 and beyond. But he decided to take Trump and MAGA and the people that love Trump head on. And that's where the political calculus was just absolutely blown. If he could have just, if he would have waited or he could have politely, if he's offered the VP, that's a different story. But let's say that they decide to go in a different direction. They weren't going to give him the VP. At least he was the person backing Trump. And MAGA country would have said, this guy's backing Trump. Now you're going to have a lot of MAGA people remembering DeSantis. But maybe four years. I mean, is DeSantis better than Joe Biden? No, absolutely. Vote for him in a heartbeat instead of that. But why piss off other people that you unnecessarily don't need to piss off? Anyways, great speech. Start off with all about the campaign, all about what he did. Oh, okay, fine, the first couple of minutes. Then he just literally took out Nikki Haley completely, putting her in bed with all the corporates and the elites and the neocons. So he just basically you know, shot that missile off uh, after Nimrata. Uh, Haley, oh, and her name is Nimrata. I guess the middle name is Nikki. So she goes by Nikki instead of her given Indian name, Nimrata. And then gave some accolades to Trump, but showed some differences between him about with the COVID and the Dr. Fauci thing. So a little couple of needles in there too, while at the same time, you know, you're giving her a thing. And then followed up giving thanks to his wife and kids and building snowmen and, you know, snow castles, you know, in the sand, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, good thing for Ron DeSantis. He's out. Nikki Haley's going to get crushed in New Hampshire. And then it's just Trump all the way. And everybody is just talking. The news has something. The MSLSDs, the mainstream media, the alphabet networks, they got something to talk. They know this is already done. This is like one and done, folks. Iowa, one and done. Door should have been slammed shut. But the mainstream, the lamestream media isn't going to, they, they're not going to give up that easy. And once it's, they already know, fait accompli, that Trump is there, then it's going to be war drums every single day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week until the 5th of November, election day of this year. They're going to continually go after this man, Trump. You know that, you know that as well as I do. <laughs> Anyways, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host. My name is Dr. Nasser. If you haven't done so already, we'd love you to subscribe to the channel. Like, share, and follow us. Let us know in your comments below. Did you think he was going to give his, his uh, stopping, suspending his campaign? I was like, hey, we're going to suspend the campaign. Sounds so much better than end the campaign. Why didn't somebody just say, we're going to end the campaign right now? There's no way for us. To... Anyways, you know what I'm talking about politicians amazingly unbelievable anyways my final thought when you're right you're right we've always been right about this and when you're left well DeSantis isn't left but he certainly was wrong until next time folks take care and stay safe